Hello everybody, welcome back. If you are like me, you have a ton of time on your hands right now. It's making me crazy, but what better time to DIY? So I know a lot of you had mentioned that you have certain DIYs that you'd really like to do, but there's just stuff that you don't have access to. And I wanted to select something that you will undoubtedly have access to, and that is a men's oversized long sleeve t-shirt. Mine is by Fruit of the Loom. This came from Amazon, but you can find them at Walmart, Kmart. Uh, you can find them at Target. You can find it pretty much at, at garage sales. You can find it at thrift stores. You can find them anywhere, and you probably might even have one of these in your possession. So, men's long sleeve t-shirt. So, I washed this immediately once I got it in the mail because you just have, you can't be too careful. Better safe than sorry, so I washed it first thing. It faded a little bit right off the bat, but it's a really cheap Fruit of the Loom t-shirt. But you want to make sure that when you're working with a particular shirt and you're going to be doing what I'm going to show you, you want to make sure that the weave looks like this. Do you see how it's smooth? So the fact that it's smooth means that you're going to get some nice even cuts. It's not going to flake off. It's not going to stretch too much. Some four-way stretch is good, but others it's more of a thicker waffle weave that you can really see when you look at it. Stay away from those. It's not gonna cut properly, it's not gonna weave, and when you pull it, you're gonna take something that's this long and it's gonna stretch like 10 feet. It's gonna look ridiculous and it's going to pill and flake like crazy, so you kinda wanna stay away from that. So, there's gonna be variations on this because I wanna freestyle this shirt. I wanna give you the confidence to freestyle and I'm gonna give you some tips and ideas on how to do that. I have no idea what I'm doing to the shirt. I mean, I have sort of a vague idea what I might wanna do, but once I get it in front of me, I'm really gonna let the shirt decide what it wants to be. So, some tips. If you want a more masculine cut to this, you wanna leave the neckband in, because I'm not gonna be doing that. I'm gonna be cutting this neckband out, which is gonna be creating more of a neckline. Decollete is gonna be showing. It might go off the shoulder. I don't know how much it's gonna stretch, but if you cut it that way, that's what you're gonna end up with, but if you want that more masculine look to it, keep that neckline in. In addition to that, I usually, when I do the cut and weaves, when I show it to you, it's super easy to do the ends where you cut it and then just tie it in a knot. It's really easy that way, foolproof. However, the way that I like to do it, I like a more neat end. So when I cut it, I sew it closed. I'm gonna show you how to do that, but please bear in mind, you don't have to end it that way if you don't want to. Another thing, if you have areas that you don't want shown or areas you wanna focus on or don't wanna focus on, take the shirt, put it on inside out and stand in the mirror. Get yourself a white eyeliner and you're gonna to wanna to mark those areas that you don't want shown. Like if you don't want it to go too low past a certain point, mark it. In addition to that, one last tip, always cut less than you want to cut because you can't undo a cut once it's done. However, if you cut it too little, you can always go back in, make it a little bit bigger. But once that cut's been made, that's it. You can't go back on it. So make sure that you cut less than you want to and that way you'll end up with less mistakes or less likely to have any sort of mishaps and have to throw this into the scrap bin. So without further ado, let's get started. If you'd like to keep the neckband in, by all means, skip this step, but for my design, it's gone. So first thing you wanna do when cutting out a neckband, if you've never done this before, you wanna locate the seam and cut just below it. If you wanna cut wider, obviously you can cut a little bit wider, but I don't want it too wide because we're gonna be slashing and weaving, and I'd like this to stay somewhat up on the shoulders and not completely fall down. Okay, so this is something you're probably gonna hear me refer to quite a few times in the video. Whenever you cut, you wanna make it a point to stretch, not too tight, but when you stretch, what you're doing is each time you cut, you're giving yourself a much neater edge because the ends are gonna curl under. So unless they serve a protective function and they're keeping the hornets from going up your sleeve and attacking your nipples, they gotta go.
For the first cut, I decided that I want to do a diagonal pattern. I don't know if I'm going to weave it, but I'm definitely going to slash it. So mark your line, fold it. Folding is your friend when you're doing these slash and weaves. It's the only way to do it, but make sure you keep the front separate from the back because whatever you do to the front, you're going to end up doing to the back. So you want to make sure that those are separate. So what I'm doing here is an I'm aligning it and I'm making sure that everything matches up because if they're not matched up, they don't have to be perfect, but if it's not matched up, whatever I cut, I could cut through it on the other side. It could look fine on my side, but then on the other side, I can cut straight through it and then ruin it. So bearing in mind that you always want to cut less than what you plan to, because you can always go back in and cut more. This looks like a big cut, right? When you flip it over, it's going to be double the size. So always bear that in mind. Most, not all the patterns that I cut tend to go in a graduated pattern. It either goes from big to small or it goes small to big. You can really switch that up and do really whatever you want with it. I really do like to be super careful. So one thing I do stick to is I like to cut a lot less than what I need because in the end I can always go back in and cut more because once you cut too much, you're kind of married to it at that point and we definitely don't want to have to deal with having to repair something or try to work a plan B. Never work with a plan B. Always go with your plan A and then elaborate if you need to. And that's what we're doing here. This is a total freestyle design. I have no idea what I'm doing at this point and it's gonna get crazier as it goes. Spoiler alert, I've seen it. For shame, I pulled it too tight. This is exactly what happens if you, one, cut your strips too thin, which I might have done here. Also, if you pull too tight, it's important to pull them, but don't pull too tight. Now, there are two ways that we can go about fixing this. We can cut the strips out entirely and pretend they didn't even exist, or we can go into damage control and sew them closed. Guess what I did? I sewed them closed, but you can go either or. What rip? I usually only call on the container lid when it's time to weave, but I think in this case, it's necessary. Black and black definitely doesn't help illustrate on how to do something, so we're gonna use that just so we can see the whole weaving process. It's gonna make things a little bit more difficult. I highly recommend only implementing it when you're trying to weave something but when you're actually trying to shred and you're trying to get your portions in place where you want to cut, always use the fold and then add the container lid or whatever you need to put inside the shirt afterward. You definitely want to put something inside it. You can use a pillowcase, a container lid is what I use, a plank of wood, anything that you have that will display it in a way where you can weave it better. It's difficult, not impossible, but really difficult to weave properly if you don't have something inside the shirt. If you've ever tried this process before without anything inside it and had difficulties, you will be so surprised at how much your skill level increases and how much more control you have when you do implement something, boom, right inside there. Since folding is out of the question, we are going to pinch the fabric to guide our hands on where to cut. Now, something that I just noticed about this shirt in particular, there are no side seams. I often use side seams as a guide. Seams are great because they give you a great way to just kind of guide you where you wanna go. I'm gonna work with this. I want this design to go all the way around and just wrap right around the back of the shirt. I think it could look really cool. And I think I just found where my next incisions are gonna go. Okay, so you want to find your perfect center and pinch upward and allow that to be your guide 
for your next round of cuts. I like it, but we didn't come here for a couple slashes here and a couple slashes there. No, let's go big or go home. I'm going shoulder all the way down to the hem and we're not stopping there. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. I'm not sure where, but a lot further than we were before. So I'm gonna go with my tried and true graduated pattern. We're gonna start from the bottom, gonna make it bigger, and then slowly get a little bit smaller as we go up. When you leave it long at the bottom, you end up getting this cool draping effect. The longer the better, but I'm just gonna keep it at this because I wanna give myself more freedom to do different things. I'm not quite sure where else I'm gonna cut. It's gonna be a lot of different places, so I think this should probably be enough right here. Next, I want to start by going in between our first slashes diagonally and then stop and then go straight down. I'm gonna leave the front alone for now before I get a little bit too crazy and then we're gonna get a good start on the back. What are these marks on the shirt? You clean off a table before you use it and then still wood manages to make these magic marks. Okay, so you know that pattern we started at the front and I said there were no side seams? We're gonna keep it going. So I'm gonna pinch the fabric up at the back, starting from the center of where the pattern started at the front and just follow it. Follow it down into a diagonal pattern down to the very hem of the back of the shirt. Oh my god, I'm so mad. Okay, so I cut a pattern down the center back and I forgot to turn the camera on. So I'm just going to show you what I did. I did a pattern that I do tend to go with quite a lot in the back. It's something that I really do like. So I start kind of wide, not too wide, and then I kind of get bigger and larger and go a little bit to a peak, and then I reel it back in, and then I taper down. And that's what I did here. Would you look at all of this prime armpit real estate? Do you think we're gonna let this go to waste? No. I want there to be more slash, less shirt. So we're gonna cut from the armpit down all the way to the hem. 
be careful once you get close to the pattern on the other side. Once you get close to the slashes, you don't want to compromise the integrity of the fabric. You don't want to get too close. So just be a little bit more careful. Make your slashes a little bit more deliberate. Oh, looks like I found some space between the shoulder seam and the back slashes. I will be using that as well. So making sure when you cut, you don't cut into the seam and you also don't cut in to the slashes on the other side. Make your cuts, make them small, but also flip over every now and again just to make sure you're not getting too close to the slashes on the other side. Oh yeah, okay, so I think the theme to this shirt is if you see space, cut it. Main point here, you want to make sure that you don't cut into the slashes on either side because as we keep cutting, we're getting dangerously close to other slashes. So just bearing that in mind because we want to keep the integrity of the shirt. We don't want it to fall apart. We want it to look like it's basically dangling by a thread, but it really isn't. I want to go in between the slashes and kind of make little baby cuts. Nothing massive, but definitely something I don't plan to weave. Just little slashes here and there. I think that really adds something to it when you kind of throw them in sporadically. Oh yeah, look at that naked ass triangle. You're next. Pinch it up, fold it over, always being aware of where you are so as not to cut into other slashes. Make your cuts, make them small, and then you can always make them bigger after. Okay, time to do the sleeves. There are three main points to remember and then the rest of it is entirely up to your interpretation. First, you want to make sure those shoulder seams are aligned because what you do to one sleeve, you automatically do to the other and it gives you an even result. Secondly, with this particular shirt, it's oversized so you're going to have baggier sleeves. Work out all those wrinkles, smooth it out as much as you can because if you cut into a wrinkle, you're going to create a jagged edge. And then thirdly, you want to make sure that your very first cut is a small cut. And that's it. The rest is entirely up to you because what you do from here, it can be any design that you want. You don't have to copy me here. You can if you want to, but you can go zigzag. You can go straight down. You can go from one side all the way to the other before you hit that seam. Holding the very first strip, take the second and pull it over the first. And then take the third and pull it through the second. The fourth, pull it through the third. Fifth, pull it through the fourth. Sixth, pull it through the fifth. And then so on and so on and so on. You're going to keep pulling it through the next one. Kind of an up and over sort of thing. And then you'll end up with this kind of ladder. If you've reached a point where you've made your slashes a little bit narrow, as I have here, you're going to find it could be a little bit taxing on the fingers, and you might find that the hole tears just a little bit. Just don't be too rough. It will work. It will go through. It could be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but I promise the end result is worth it in the end.
weave it all the way down to the second to last strip because you're gonna need that because the one that you have in your fingers you're gonna cut that and then sew it around the very last strip that's gonna be your anchor I really was not kidding when I said I was freestyling this because it's at this point that I was trying to figure out which move to make next. I'm looking at the shirt, I'm moving it around, I'm flipping it over and I'm trying to figure out what's going to get woven, what slashes are just going to stay as slashes, what I'm going to add to it. So I honestly have no idea at this point what I'm going to do next. If I decide to weave them or not, I think it's important that this particular group of slashes work to our advantage. So like I said, when you have a longer slash at the bottom, it just drapes a lot nicer. So I'm gonna keep them a little bit wider and if I do decide that I wanna weave it, at least it's gonna be easier to work with because it's gonna be near impossible to get your fingers through if the holes are a little bit too narrow. It was here that I decided we are going to weave this pattern to the other weave. So you see the diagonal one that we started off with the very, very beginning? I'm gonna use one of the loops created from that ladder to anchor the second ladder here. So I'm gonna pull that strip through and now it's officially anchored here. And then just weave it from here all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so this slash is located right next to the very first cuts that we made, diagonal neckline. We're gonna start at the top, weave it straight down to the very bottom.
Since everything on the front seems to be weaved where I want it to be weaved, I'm kind of looking at spaces that can use some different slashes and just adding them here and there. Feel free to stop at any point, but when I got going here, I really did get scissor happy. So I really just wanted to put slashes and weaves anywhere I saw enough space to do so. So I'm going to get started on the back of the shirt now and I'm just going to do a basic weave but before I do that I want to give a nice stretch to all the strips to make sure that the edges are curled under and they're neat and even and like I said I'm not going to do anything over the top just the basic weave to start with using the first as a guide second over the first third over the second fourth fifth and then so on it's really easy once you get used to it The overall design of the shirt is in between little spaces between weave and slash, I want to put little baby slashes. I like the way that it looks and I'm going to kind of go along with that pattern but something that I really wanted to point out is that if you're new to doing DIY and you're new to this whole sort of concept, always do asymmetry. Never do anything straight because there's a lot of pressure to get things straight and if you have a lot of trouble doing that, work on projects that makes things asymmetrical you're putting things here you're putting things there there's no real rhyme or reason to it because in the end when it comes out diagonal you meant to do that So before you weave those sleeves, you want to make sure you give the strips a really good stretch. A great way to weave these more effectively than I could have demonstrated it is to stick your leg through it. I would have done that, but you would have seen absolutely nothing because I was wearing black leggings at the time. So stick your leg through the sleeve and you'll have a much easier time weaving it. 